Hello, my name's Joanna Pellero, and this is my chat physics presentation on utilising the A-level required practicals to improve student skills and knowledge. A little bit about my background. I used to be a head of department um, and a STEM coordinator. However, I've stepped back this year in order to focus on my PhD in education. I wanted to talk to you today about how we can use those CPACs and those core practicals in each of our specifications to enable us to support students in learning how to do practicals independently. We don't want to use these practical endorsements just as a way to tick a box. The best thing we can do is use them to actually benefit our students' skills and help them going forward in their potential careers as scientists. The required practicals um, are diff slightly different in the different exam boards here. We've got AQA, we've got OCR, and we've got the Edexcel specification requirements for these practicals. Um, they're very similar. You can have a look at that. You can see that there are similarities between them. They're generally looking at the same things, but overall there are slight differences. I am going to be talking mostly about the AQA practicals because that's what I'm familiar with. However, hopefully what I've got to say will be relevant across all of the exam boards. There are 12 required practicals for AQA and they are listed here. And those are the ones that they would complete over the course of two years. Normally, numbers one to six through the course of year 12 and seven to 12 through the course of year 13. The key idea behind this practical endorsement is that we increase the amount of independence that the students have. So we start with low choice and we give them full methods, clear instructions. We tell them what to do and we tell them how to analyze the data. By doing this, we scaffold their ability to learn and to develop into independent learners. And by the time they reach the end of year 30, the idea is that they will be able to complete a full investigation with minimal guidance. And this is what we want to aim for. But these are novice learners and we're gonna to have to support them early on. And is this amount of choice that we are going to talk about? So you start by giving them little choice in their um, development of their practicals and you build up to the point where you're increasing the number of options they have until they are completing the investigation by themselves. So these are CPACs. These are the common practical assessment criteria that they have to be able to do. These are the same across all of the exam boards and all pupils are expected to be able to do these by the end of year 13 in order to gain the practical endorsement. They have to be able to follow written procedures. They have to be able to apply investigative approaches and methods. Safety is important in section three. They have to be able to make and record observations and they have to be able to research, reference and report. These sections can be done in different stages and across different practicals. There are 12 practicals given but you're not required to only do those 12 practicals. There are other ways that you can show that your students have met these CPACs. However, the method I want to show you today uses the 12 core practicals for AQA to develop these skills across the course of your A-level. Some of these CPACs are easier to do than others. The most challenging, I think, can sometimes be the referencing and reporting because we're not very good at teaching the students about referencing. This is one thing that I feel that you have to teach the students the skill from the beginning and make sure that they are happy with it before asking them to do it by themselves. Otherwise, unfortunately, you're likely to end up with a report full of information from Wikipedia. There's also the apparatus and techniques that you require, and these are listed here. So they have to be able to actually use these different bits of equipment, analog apparatus, digital instruments, different measuring methods, watches or light gates, calipers and micrometers, whether digital or vernier scales, constructing circuits, designing and checking those, using signal generators and oscilloscopes, generating and measuring waves, using light lasers or light source, important to be able to use data loggers or ICT, and using ionizing radiation, including the detectors. One of the biggest challenges that schools are facing with the practical endorsement is lack of equipment. I'd like to encourage you now to talk to CLEEPS as pe people who will be able to support you in finding low cost methods to be able to access all of these different experimental techniques. And definitely speak to, to schools 
um, in your local area if you're struggling for practical equipment, because it may be that you're able to share that equipment with another school. It is possible to do nearly all of the CPACs, if not all of them, at a low cost or very um, limited cost way of doing it. And there are different ways to do it, um, which, uh, like I said, Cleeps would be the, the people to talk to about that. So our idea is that we want to build up independence. We want to start assuming that they know nothing and that we can encourage them to build up to full competency in designing a practical. This is a screenshot from uh, my booklet on um, the first practical. Um, before I carry on, I'd like to immediately thank AQA, who wrote the bulk of the booklet. I just simply edited it. And also my colleagues at Loughborough Grammar School, who put in some of the work towards this booklet as well. Um, the way that I've done it is I've set up every single CPAC in the same, every single required practical in the same way and outlined the CPACs that the children will be following during that lesson. They get the practical. We're showing them which apparatus and techniques from that uh, that they're going to be studying. And then we've very specifically shown them which different parts of the assessment they're going to be um, conducting during that practical. And this is the first one. They then will conduct that practical and do the write up. And each one is staged in order to improve their competency. And this is the, the list of CPACs that they're going to do. So I'm going to show you specifically the booklet that we give in order to support the students with their learning. So here we have the required practical task. It gives them all of the information from the exam board. And here is that first practical that I was just talking about. And that first practical that shows them the CPACs they're going to do, and then it's given them a very specific set of instructions on what they need to do. It's given them a full method. It's given them a diagram. It's even given them the table that they may need to conduct their experiment. It's also explaining what's happening, telling them how to plot the graph here, actually plot a graph of 1 over f against the length. It's also then given the equation that they need to use and allowed them to do the work. The places in bold are where they're going to have to do some individual work. There's also an extension task and another table for that and also some more information, including the equation. This practical is extremely scaffolded. This is the type of practical that I would give first to year 12 taking them from the very beginning and expecting them to follow the written instructions. In other words, our CPAC 1A correctly follows written instructions and that they'll be able to record the observation. I'm not expecting them at this point to be able to do referencing and reporting or safety measures. I've done that for them. I just want to assess them on these basic CPACs and make sure that they're comfortable with the idea of practical work. Moving on from that, each different practical has then assessed different CPACs. So we have safely using a range of practical equipment and identifying hazards and researching and reporting. So in this particular practical, I wanted to emphasise those two CPACs that they hadn't already done. This one had a research and report, write a report regarding the safe use of lasers before conducting the practical work. This enables them to start working on that safety stuff and working on the research, referencing and reporting. I gave them a guide on how to reference and that can actually be really important. Remember, these are novice learners. So if we go down to the end, it does actually show them here how to re reference a source, including screenshots and how they can actually use a bibliography within their text. This is actually a useful skill for them to have if they're going on to university. You might, if you're comfortable doing it, you could also use um, EndNote or encourage them to use something like RefWorks. Um, but that might be beyond some of them. And Word is definitely a, 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 um, a program that they're all going to be comfortable with. So each different CPAC, as we go through, each different practical is assessing the different CPACs and is working to give them different independent skills. Again, with the second one, we've given them a lot of structure. And then as we go through, we start to have less and less. This one here is talking about processing data. Remember, you don't have to assess the entire CPAC within the same practical. You can break this up. And for this one, I got them to do learning about using Excel. And here, again, I've talked them through it. I've done it stage by stage. Every single section is given to them in a really intense scaffolding to teach them how to do these skills that they are not already aware of. Then, as we move through the course, things start to get more and more independent. 
this, as you can see, all of the instructions are getting less. They have to be able to still follow some written procedures. It depends on which one we're doing and which one they're designing. So here, this one, practical six, I expect them to be doing it quite well. So here, applies investigative approaches and methods. It's their turn to have a go. They're being told what you're going to get, but we're not being told what the method is. And in fact, I've said you'll be quite required to write your own plan with a circuit diagram. The idea behind this is not to scare the pupils, but to encourage them in independence, which is what we want. When they move on to year 13, again, it is a similar setup, and that setup enables them to continue to develop with the way that they are working. Same kinds of things. For this one, we've also got a data plotting uh, exercise beforehand, and that data plotting exercise allows us to do more um, work on CPAC 5A, which can be quite hard to assess because it's the processing data and carrying out research and reporting. So this enables them to practice their Excel skills and remind them of how they can do that and to also allow us to do some more assessment. Again, we, we're, we're scaffolding them through it and we're working up to being able to simply give them information to get on with the practicals by themselves. Again, here's the following equipment. What I've found from doing it in this way is I'm enabling the students to come up with ways of, of meeting those CPACs and, and being responsible for them by themselves, making sure that I'm confident in the fact that I've actually taught them and that they meet the practical endorsement. And also hopefully giving them a sense of uh, achievement and making sure that they're actually learning some skills. All my pupils write it up in lab books. I would strongly recommend that as well. And then making sure that they are confident and capable learners with the practicals. Practicals can feel overwhelming to students. And this is one way to help support them through careful scaffolding. If you've got any questions, any comments, or if you would like a copy of the resources, I'm perfectly happy to send them out. Please do just tweet me at PhysicsJoe. And thank you very much for listening to my Chat Physics talk.